You know, we talk about a lot of things on this channel. We've talked about Bible Man, we've talked about Skibbity Toilet, and we've even talked about esoteric horrors beyond our human comprehension. But you know what we haven't talked about? We haven't talked about Tom and Jerry. Unpopular opinion, I'm sure, but as a kid, I, I just could not, for the life of me, sit down and force myself to watch a single episode of Tom and Jerry. And if I did, well, you bet your ass I was going through something, okay? Well, it wasn't a pretty picture. I in short, it it's like Garfield, you know? You know what you're gonna get every single time. It's just so predictable. It's it's so milk toast. Apart from the animation being good, of course. But but this analog horror, it did something different. It's like Tom, if Tom had an ego death after taking too much DMT. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, <laughs> why don't I just show you instead? But before I do, make sure you go click the link in the description and watch the original video for yourselves. Because, uh, you know, spoiler alert, my poorly timed jokes will suck out any horror that was meant to be felt by this experience, so you have been warned. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. He stared at me. <laughs> now, who could this possibly be? Now, I know this is supposed to be Tom, but I, I just love the fact that he looks more like Barney in a hoodie with a meth pipe shoved down his pants. He stood in the same spot for minutes. I tried to be as quiet as possible, but it looked like he was staring into my soul. At this point, we can hear footsteps. It seems that Tom is leaving, and he learned how to put on a pair of cowboy boots, funny enough. I wish my cat could do that. Damn. He left and I had no clue why, without knowing the fact that he could still be in my house. My gut told me to get up and I did. I grabbed my camera recorder and went downstairs. Now, now why would you do that? L literally, one of my childhood personas escaped, broke into your house, and, and you think a camera is going to change his mind? No, no, of course not. He has cowboy boots now. They're there's no saving that man. Surely you must be out of your mind. The lights were off and my door was left open. I quickly closed and locked it, and I got the batteries from the drawer. My camera turned on and I went upstairs to my room. Tom was still chasing him. He was super close to hitting Jerry. Well, okay, I, I'm really struggling to visualize this here, hold, hold on. Okay, what I'm gathering from this is that two deformed middle-aged men are chasing each other outside of the protagonist's window and uh, uh, Tom is making his uh, plumber Jerry play jump rope with a cleaver. Now this might sound surprising to most, but down in Florida, well, this is just a regular occurrence. And he almost unalives him. They go on and on until he caught Jerry. Oh, Fuck, man. Now, now you have to hire that three-star plumber off of Angie's list. Now Craig's gonna be your plumber. Is this what you wanted, Tom? Well, you wanted, you wanted Craig to fix those broken pipes for you? Is that it? <laughs> Tom looked at me through the window and the lights were off. Oh, oh shit, yeah, that, that's not Barney. That, that, that's not a middle-aged man either. He fled. He wanted suffering. I could tell. I called the cops. 911, what's your emergency? About 15 minutes ago, someone broke into my house. What did they look like? I'm sorry, this is literally the last thing I would want any 911 operator to ask me. I mean, you're not gonna check to see if the guy's okay, you're not gonna ask if the intruder is still in his house. Wait a second. Oh, this reeks of an inside job. That's not it, though. My neighbor has a cat, and it's acting strange. It unalived a mouse, but with a knife. They asked for my address, and they told me to tell them what happened when they got there. Oh yeah, yeah, the whole police department's in on it. Jesus. Jesus Christ, Tom bribed the whole police team, mafia style. He just he, he just pulled up to the police department in a 1981 Cadillac Seville, and he, you know, takes a drag of his cigar, and he's like, Hey! Don't let me make any, any, any type of analog horror, ever. Nobody let me do that. Please, I have no business, <laughs> I have no business with, with this stuff. But they were too late. Here they just show a still image of Tom with the slowed version of Run Rabbit playing in the background. Then Tom's owner can be heard faintly screaming his name, and then an image of her presumably decapitated body shows here. I headed out the front door and told them what happened. They thought I was crazy. Because they were paid off! Why doesn't anyone see the same things that I see? It's not like I'm crazy or anything. I showed them the video, but they didn't believe me.
believe me. It surprised me. They thought it was fake. I've heard asking if she was okay, but they wouldn't give me an answer. I wanted to know, so I kept asking, is she okay? A cop finally replied, no, she is deceased. God. God damn it. God damn it, Tom. God. I dropped to the ground and shedded tears, even though I barely knew her. The fact that a cat did this was bizarre. I thought to myself, this isn't real. But it was, and that was the truth. I couldn't think. What was happening? First I encounter a murderer in my house, now my neighbor is unalive from a cat. Welcome to Florida, you son of a bitch. Welcome home. And by the way, I am of sound mind, and I am not under the influence of any substances, just to let everyone know. That night, they took Tom and put him in a shelter. Well, well, now how the fuck did they do that? I, I mean, you guys saw what, what Tom looked like in the first picture, didn't you? That That's not a cat, that's a grown-ass man. But what kind of shelter did they put him in? And who's gonna adopt him? Oh my god, who's gonna adopt him? Luckily, he was caged up alone with no contact with any other animals. They think it was the abnormal looking person that broke into my house that unalived Mrs. Mammy. I'm so lucky I'm here. I could have been unalived by now. Yeah, at least it was my poor defenseless neighbor that kicked the can and not me. <laughs> Stupid fucking bitch. After a long night of discussions with investigators, I went back home. The time was 12.34 a.m. I turned on the TV. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Gale. I thought you might like another installment for your book. You have one so soon? Right out of the oven. Well, in that case, make yourself comfortable. You look as if you need a rest. Oh, I got a good night's sleep after the fireworks were over. Uh, this hairy ass Sasquatch on the loose, right? And, uh, well, he, quite frankly, he's attracted to static and the sound of alarms. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to tell everyone this in the form of a very loud alarm. No particular reason. I, I just want to see if it works. I just want to see what that son of a bitch can do. This is the part of the, uh, the fuck uh, the the fucking video where we decide how good this analog horror is on a scale of one to ten. Drum roll, please. Can we can we get the drum roll going? Okay. Overall, I'm going to give this analog horror a six point five out of ten. Just for me personally. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, I really like the concept that they went with here by turning a beloved. A uh, childhood uh, cartoon, you know, something as simple as Tom and Jerry, am I right, into this uh, this horror concept, this horror story. Um, out of all the classic cartoon mediums that they could have used, uh, Tom and Jerry definitely would not have been on my predictions list, so that, that was definitely a very ambitious move on their end, and I appreciate that. The only thing that didn't necessarily sell me on the horror is the use of very common analog horror tropes that I guess I've just seen so many times before and they were used in very admittedly conventional ways. Not that this had to be, you know, a complex story or anything, not at all. Because for what it was trying to go for, I still think it was very well executed. Now, it, it's just the whole story about, you know, beloved cartoon character goes crazy, unalive everyone, gets arrested, and now he's on the loose. I just feel like I've heard that type of tale so many times before, just in different ways. Now, I hate to make the comparison here, but take the Steamboat Willie analog horror, for example, right? I, I feel like that one was delivered in a much more believable way that felt like something that could actually happen in real life, right? And it also wasn't trying too hard to be 
scary. No, it was actually the implication of the things that really went down behind the scenes that really made my heart drop because it kind of forces you to visualize these things by not showing it to you directly. And you know, even though it is the same concept of beloved cartoon character goes hog wild, it's the same concept, but to me I feel like that was executed in a much more unique and believable way. And just for me personally, this one was just more of what I'm used to, you know? It wasn't anything um, different. But that doesn't mean I don't like it. I really, really love it for what it is. It's simple, you know what I mean? It, it gets to the point and it honestly kind of reminds me of an old school creepypasta. And I just, my nostalgia is loving the hell out of that. I love it, love to see it. And it honestly makes me really curious to see how people in the future are going to run with this concept of taking a beloved children's character and turning it into something horrible, like, uh, like Barney, for example. Yeah, you, actually, actually, you know what? You guys want to see me make a Barney analog horror? You guys want to see me do that? Don't let me make any, any, any type of analog horror ever. Nobody let me do that. Please, I have no business. <laughs> I have no business with with this stuff. Oh, you do? Um, seriously though, that, that, that's something you guys are interested in. Let me let me know in the comments. I'm not making any promises, but uh, yeah, to be fair, the last thing I should be doing is uh, making any type of analog horror series. No, Soupy Soup making an analog horror series, that's probably, that's the making for disaster. Nobody asked for that. Like if I made that shit, it would, it would literally just be like, you know, like the man in the suit kinda, you know, that guy, but maybe sweatier and maybe just, just a little bit more relatable. What do you guys think about that, huh? And uh, yeah, this was a shorter one. This was a shorter little video. I just thought I'd show you all this little nugget that I found. I thought it was a real treat. And uh, well, sweet dreams. And even if you're not going to sleep, I guess sweet. Hold on, let me think of something. I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking, hold on, sweet.